Now, if I would have told you, now if I had told you a couple of days ago that Jackson Riker was released by WWE, I'm sure a lot of you would have come on here and you would have been celebrating. You'd be like, hell yeah, bitches! We love it! We need it! Inject it straight into our veins! We've been wanting this! How come he wasn't part of the 18 others that were released earlier in the damn month? This is an outrage! How did he slip through the cracks? It's a conservative conspiracy! And all that other shit. But now, <laughs> you're probably saying to yourself, not like this. Not like this. Not like this. Oh yes, apparently just like this. Because while Jackson Riker was certainly released earlier this week by WWE, and that makes a number of you, I'm sure, pretty happy and pretty excited and contented about that development, uh, the problem is, is the price that you get along with that. That in order for a Jackson Riker to be cut, it meant that the rest of Hit Row got cut. What in the Sam Hell fuck is going on here? And that's not all. Not only was Isaiah Swerve Scott and Ashanti the Adonis and Top Dalla all released, so all of Hit Row was released in November. So apparently it's a no Hit Row November for WWE. They got rid of every fucking buddy. Not only that, they released Tegan Knox, released Shane Thorne, they released Drake Maverick, and they released John Morrison. And let me start off by saying this, is that I understand that sometimes you're going to have to have some type of roster turnover. You can't keep everybody, nor should you have to feel like you keep everybody. Did the WWE have a roster glut that they needed to clean through some of? Yes, unfortunately they did. That is the nature of the beast. That said, though, you already released 18 people earlier this month. Did this second round of cuts feel really necessary? You're talking about record revenues and or record profits, but then we got to get rid of you. It's a budget cut thing, kids. Sorry. Best of luck in your future endeavors. The actual fuck is going on here. Like, you look at the whole thing here with Hit Row. If people in the company were so convinced that this gimmick wasn't going to work, then so why the fuck did you ever bring it up to the main roster to begin with? Why did you ever bring these four up to the main roster to begin with? And then if you're sitting there saying, well, BFAB wasn't critical to the group, you can move on without it, but then you turn around and say, you know what, yeah, the rest of the group doesn't fucking work without her. Like, what the fuck is going on here? Meanwhile, you have overpriced wastes of space like... Fucked off Ziggler, eating up probably close to a million goddamn dollars a year to bring you absolutely nothing. You're basically making the decision that you would rather waste money on this person than four potential talents. Like, just from the surface of looking at it, if you want to talk about business, let's talk about fucking business. Because some idiots are always going to be defenders and sheep of this goddamn company and every decision that they make and try to run counterculture and try to do this and try to do that. Tell me the fucking business justification for that. There is no way, shape, or form that somebody like a <laughs> fuck Dolph Ziggler brings you anywhere close to the return on the initial investment that you put into him. Meanwhile, you have four talents, four opportunities for them to at least bring as much to the table as a <laughs> fucked off Ziggler at a fraction of the price. You can literally have all four of them and spend less in terms of total money than for one person who does nothing. That does not make business sense. That is fucking stupid. So that excuse needs to stop. As far as the whole thing about, well, Top Dollar had some heat backstage, it almost feels like it could be true, but it also feels like it could be a thing where people are associating some of the shit he said on Twitter to the Bucks and others and some of the running of mouth that he was doing to associating that with backstage heat. It could also be that the WWE is trying to put out there to try and save some faces and say, well, you know, this asshole couldn't keep his mouth, fucking mouth shut and he would have problems backstage. Like, even then... Why would you cut Swerve Scott and Adonis? That doesn't make any fucking sense. That's what we have to hone in on. It's just how little fucking sense this makes. 
This whole Nick Khan, Johnny Ace operation is fucking stupid. Because you can't sit there and justify this from a business standpoint. You can't get your return on your investment if you get rid of them before you ever get a chance to see what type of return on investment you could get. Why in the hell would you have invested so much time on them in NXT just to release them as soon as you brought them up to the main damn roster? You see how that makes no goddamn sense whatsoever? And then you look at John Morrison. Surely his contract is higher and you might be looking at it and saying, well, he doesn't provide you the full value in return of what you're paying. That could be true. But sometimes that happens. But this is also a guy that was just involved in a featured storyline at WrestleMania. And a little over seven months later, he's gone from the company entirely. After you just released his wife a couple of years ago. Happy Thanksgiving, betches. It should be a good lesson for everybody in the business, especially if they're couples, husband, wife, girlfriend, girlfriend, boyfriend, girlfriend, boyfriend, boyfriend, whatever the fuck combination and alliteration you're talking about here. Don't put all of your eggs into one wrestling basket. Because Frankie Monet and John Morrison should show you that that's a really bad idea because now within the course of less than a month, they both don't have jobs, basically. And now they're waiting out their 90-day no-compete clauses in order to sign somewhere else where they can appear on TV. I gotta understand why you bring back a John Morrison just to release him like... You're looking at Drake Maverick. Like, was he really getting paid that much money to where you couldn't keep him? This is a guy that when you put him in spots did good things. He's an entertaining dude. No, he was never going to be a main eventer, but he didn't need to be. And you just had released him several months back. You bring him back just to release him again? Like, what the fuck is going on here? And beyond all of that, beyond all of that, talking about these releases, it's just, why in the hell would you risk the PR hit right before a pay-per-view like fucking Survivor Series? You're supposed to care about that one. It's one of your flagship shows. Clearly, you don't treat it like it is anymore. Clearly, you must not give a shit about it because you intentionally seem to seek out, hey, what's the best way for us to get positive attention on one of our bigger, more important shows of the year? Let's go ahead and fucking release talent. That'll get the job done. This whole notion of, well, it makes sense. That's the way business works. That is not the way good business works. You're investing this money on the front end. You're investing this time, this energy, these resources into these talents. You have to allow it a chance to actually manifest and grow and give you a chance to get some ROI, which means return on damn investment. You can't sit there and say that hit row wasn't going to work if you never gave it a shot to fucking work. You can't say that that gimmick wasn't going to get over when there were certainly some instances that it could potentially get over. And furthermore, on the main roster, you had just brought him up. You didn't even give him a chance to get over. And once they got there, you immediately got rid of one of the goddamn members and changes the dynamics of every freaking thing. Like, why would you be running vignettes on these guys to sit there and then bring them to release BFAB and then a couple of weeks later release the rest of them. That's fucking stupid. So we can shit on the person or people that made the decisions to cut these people. Sure. But then we should also be looking at the assholes that decided they were going to feature them and waste precious television time to air vignettes to put them on TV just to fucking release them. Who does that? What's the point? Why would your fans get invested in any of your talents if they know they could be gone just like that? I have to furthermore ask the question, why in the fuck would anybody want to go work at WWE at this point, knowing damn good and well that they're one day away from only getting 90 more days of pay? Like, who the fuck would do that? Who would want to go into this toxic environment? And you want to talk about from a business standpoint, another reason this makes absolutely no goddamn business sense is you have to at least create or give the illusion of a sense of loyalty for the employees to the employer and the employer to the employees. Well, obviously, in this case, you can't use that logic because they're independent contractors. So WWE technically isn't an employer because it's a whole load of bullshit. But the reality is, is you have to give some sense of loyalty in order to get that loyalty back. What you do is you create a toxic work environment where nobody wants to step up, nobody wants to go above and beyond, nobody wants to take risks or challenges, 
or do new things. They're afraid to make mistakes. So you get mediocrity as a result because why the fuck would they want to rock the boat? They don't want to stand up because that makes them a target and potentially easy to be fired or released in this case. And even to the whole point of those that are saying, well, unions, unions, unions. Okay, that might work in some sports to a certain degree, but how well do you really think that's going to work in wrestling? Or sports entertainment, or whatever the fuck you want to call it. And you're not thinking that one through. There are certainly some pros and there are absolutely some cons, and I don't know that the pros outweigh the cons here. What talents could start doing is saying, hey, I'm going to leverage an impact or an AEW in any contract negotiations with WWE and I'm going to get a no-cut contract. Like, that's how you fix that shit. Because either A, it's going to lead to WWE not wanting to hoard as much talent, sign as many talent just to keep them away from others. Or B, they're going to sit there and say, well, we're not going to offer as much money. We're not going to sign as many people in general. Or C, you get a no-cut contract, so at least if they release you, that's of their own fruition. But they still got to pay you the entire rest of the goddamn time. Gets rid of the budget cuts and cost-cutting bullshit. That is complete bullshit anyways. Stop signing these fucking contracts that put you in this spot where you can be released from it just like that with very little to go. And then you're told you can't compete for 90 fucking days. Who does that? So the same people that sign these types of goddamn contracts, you think would actually tow the union line? You're fucking delusional. But to do this right before a Survivor Series is freaking stupid. To release Hit Row after running vignettes and trying to initially present them like they're a big deal, but in a couple of weeks they're all fucking gone, is stupid. That is not good business. Stop making excuses for this bullshit. Having somebody like John Morrison in a featured spot at WrestleMania to be gone seven months later is not good business. That's stupid. It is a reflection of just how much Vince McMahon went from being the Vince McMahon of old to old man Vince, Al Davis style. Everything is knee-jerk, reactionary, reflex type of bullshit. It makes no goddamn sense. There is no long-term vision. And once you have a CEO who really should not be a chief executive officer, but should be a chief vision officer, who should not be looking in the here and now, but should be looking ahead three, five, ten years. Once you've got a CEO that is too focused on the here and now, you've got a fucking problem and that CEO needs to go. And all of this shit just looks like knee-jerk, reflex, reactionary bullshit. This is not defensible or justifiable from a business standpoint. I use the <laughs> fucked off Ziggler example as a perfect way to prove that. You could have literally kept all of Hit Row for what you're paying Dolph. Like, why in the fuck wouldn't you keep all of it row and get rid of Dolph? How does that make sense? Now, you got other people on the main roster telling me Tegan Knox is so much worse than somebody like a goddamn Tamina? How the hell does Tamina still have a job? You know what I mean? And you just look at this more and more, and it doesn't make any sense. And even if you want to say, oh, it's vaccine shit, you're really telling me everybody else that's still there still has a vaccine? Bullshit. You're telling me, uh, give me a break. Like, this is just ludicrous. They released 26 people in one month. Eight of them on the week of one of their supposed to be biggest shows of the damn year. Financials be damned. Look at the actual details, because the devil's in those. And the devil in those details right now is telling you that this is a poorly run company and a shitty place to work for. There is no business justification, period. Stop making excuses for this to those that are saying, well, then stop watching WWE. You know, it's not so easy. Do you stop watching others that you want to support that you get behind? Like if you're somebody that's a fan of, let's say, a Big E or a Xavier Woods or a Roman or the Usos, like should you entirely stop watching the product because of other bullshit? Right? Like it's not that easy. Some make that decision and that's great. For others, it's not so easy and we shouldn't knock them for that. But it's still stupid. And people out there need to stop making excuses for this. Because while it's not the end of the world, they released a whopping eight talents, none of them being real main event people. It's representative of a much bigger 
philosophical problem in this company that should absolutely be pushed back against hard.